Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Where have I been? Well, you know how I say life gets in the way? Life has been getting in the way like crazy. Um, there have been several things that have been going on in my life that have just been keeping me from recording a video. And uh, I even had the presence of mind of recording myself doing those things just so you, I could offer you some things so that you would understand why I didn't put out a tarantula video. But then I thought, nobody wants to see that. You, you came here to see tarantulas and uh, if I put those out, I wouldn't be giving you tarantulas. So I took that footage and I shortened it down to a little compilation of some of those things that have been getting in my way and preventing me from creating a tarantula video. So here that is. I am at the H&H &H Blueberry Farm in Boston, Florida. And uh, yeah, even though it looks kind of empty from my perspective, it's actually pretty crowded out here. There's lots of families out here picking blueberries. And in my opinion, that's the best way to do it. It's really cool picking your own blueberries and you can hear families all around. It's really neat to hear all the little kids competing who's got the most blueberries, who's picked the biggest blueberries. One of the best things is they encourage you to eat them right off the bush while you're picking. They're great. Mm. Well, my weekend started out great by picking blueberries. Little did I know that all that was about to change. Blueberries. So after picking blueberries all day, I decided I was going to fix a leak in the bathtub and what started out as a simple repair turned into a major repair. What you see here is the old mixing valve and in the process of removing the locking nut, I ended up twisting the pipes in this ancient piece of equipment. So I had no choice but to install a brand new mixing valve and this one's a lot better than the other one. And thanks to YouTube, I learned how to properly solder copper pipes and uh, I was very happy that it was successful and I successfully installed a new mixing valve and all of my welds held. Well, the following weekend, uh, my AC went out. So we had no AC in the house. And again, thanks to YouTube, we did some research, my wife and I, and come to find out that typical of what was happening with our AC unit was the um, capacitor and the capacitor had gone out. So here you see the capacitor there and you see the top of the capacitor, how it's bulging out like that. That's a clear indicator that your capacitor has gone bad. So I had to order the part and I had to replace it. Now replacing capacitors is dangerous work because they do hold a charge. So you have to make sure that you discharge them before you start messing around with them. So it was a, a kind of a scary thing for me, but I did it again, thanks to YouTube. You hear that fan blowing? That's a happy sound. <laughs> Now, this next thing is not so much a bad thing, it's actually a good thing, but it, it, it did take some time away from me in that I had to attend a two-day workshop to learn how to use and program these EV3 robots. I will be teaching robotics in my, in my class and uh, for next year, so we have to learn how to use these things before we can teach them to the kids. So, yeah, I'm really anxious to get going on these things. They're pretty fun and exciting. I know my kids are going to love them.
So as you can see, there were so many outside forces working against me to keep me from recording a video on my tarantulas. And uh, it just kind of got in the way. And on top of that, you can add in things that I'm a teacher. It's the end of the year. And we've got a lot of end of the year stuff that we're working on. We had to finalize grades all the standardized testing and then any other things that come up um not to mention on top of that there was uh, game of thrones you know <laughs> i'm a big fan of game of thrones and i had to watch it so even that got in the way on sundays and uh, let's not get into how that ended but even that factored in um what's with the little robot um i've also been made the uh, robotics coach at our school and i'm really excited about that it's something that's fun and i want to get into so i had to go to training for that and even that took away time so just a lot of different things that go on in my life that just kind of prevent me from having time or having that extra time that i could record a video wish i could do this full time but I have to make money somehow and YouTube is not paying the bills. So anyway, what do I have for you today? Today I am pairing Boris and Natasha. Boris and Natasha are my Brachypelma baby and I've been wanting to pair them for so long. Uh, I raised up Boris from a tiny little sling and he has grown up, you know, I've, I've raised him up and somewhere down the line I sexed his molt and I found out that he was in fact a male. So then I ended up searching for a female all over the place and I ended up getting lucky probably, probably about three years ago I went to a National Reptile Breeders Expo and um, I found someone that was selling a female and it was a sub-adult female very close to adult so I bought it and I got a really good deal on it and uh, so I've been waiting forever ever since then to, for them to mature and be able to breed them so um, recently he molted and he, I thought it was going to be his ultimate molt and it ended up not being but then he molted real quick after that so this last molt that he did um, it was his ultimate molt so he has matured and I'm ready. I'm excited. I want to I want to pair them together and hopefully make some babies of this species. Very very stunning species. I always get compliments on them and I always get people asking me are they really that red and the answer is yes. Uh, of course they fade over time until their next molt but yes when they first molt they are brilliantly red. They're very brilliant species. So let's go ahead and get on with the pairing. So I'm all excited to pair these two together and here's my male this is Boris and he finally matured he's about a month mature now and um, before pairing tarantulas there are a couple of things that you have to consider before you actually put the two together um, first of all you have to have a mature female but when your male matures you can't just take them and throw them in there you have to make sure that there are a few things first of all you know that they're mature um, here you get a very clear look at the tibial hooks and not all tarantulas have these not all species do some do some don't you have to know what you have in order to uh, expect to see those tibial hooks when they do mature And another thing to watch for when your male matures, and all males will have this, and this is the emboli that will develop on the end of the pedipalps. Here's a really good look at both of the emboli there on this male. And um, these are basically the sex organs of the mature male. So this is what he will use to implant his sperm into the female. And both the emboli and the tibial hooks are not the only thing you have to wait to make sure that he has made a sperm web now there are some telltale signs that you'll, you'll usually find in the enclosure like this webbing here in the corner that was not there this was not part of him molting and then there's some webbing down here that's kind of mixed in with the substrate and he's not too happy about me messing around there so now i know that he's ready when i see all this stuff And here is Natasha and she is a mature female and hopefully she'll be ready to to breed here in a few minutes and um, 
normally when you're getting ready to pair a couple of tarantulas you want to put them close together so that they sense each other and uh, you'll typically see the male will begin drumming on the enclosure on the sides of the enclosure and things like that and that indicates that he's trying to court the female so I spent about a week with them together like this and I didn't really notice any kind of drumming, but I did notice that he did a whole lot of pacing around. So hopefully he's ready to go. I don't know why, but sometimes Boris can be quite stubborn and he can't move him. Oops, I accidentally bopped him there. But um, yeah, it took a little bit of trying to get him to start moving to go over to the female's enclosure. I gotta be careful that he doesn't fall off here. He's usually pretty good about holding on to the sides of the enclosure. Okay, so now that he's down, I'm a little bit weary about getting them too close together here. Um, you never know how the female is going to react, if she's receptive or if she's going to just flat out attack him. Um, I have seen videos where they just go straight for the male and attack him before you can even react. So that's why I have my tongs in the way there. I'm just kind of forming a little barrier between them, but she's not showing any signs of wanting to pounce on him, so I'm going to kind of let him do his thing and hopefully he'll sense her real quick and then you know he, he can get started but it seems like he has no interest or doesn't sense her yet <laughs> so let me kind of help him out and nudge him down there so he can maybe find her And I guess Boris doesn't seem to sense her because he seems more interested in climbing out of the enclosure. So I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I kind of have to nudge him down to get back in the enclosure there. And there's a little bit of a threat display there from Natasha, but that's mostly from me prodding her with the tongs, so hopefully that's not anything bad. So I believe he senses her at this point because he just kind of stopped right there. They're almost touching and I saw a little bit of twitching going on there, but he just kind of continues on his way. So I'm a little bit concerned. It seems like he just is not interested 
and that's kind of strange especially for a freshly matured male um, usually they're ready and willing and any opportunity that they get they'll probably try to uh, breed with a female so um, I I'm kind of concerned that he's not taking the initiative here and just going for it And wouldn't you know it, he just finds his way back into his own enclosure. <laughs> so I'm left with no choice but to try again. And he's being stubborn as usual. Maybe this time it'll work out. So we have contact again, he's actually touching her now, so maybe that will entice him. But no, he just moves on and she of course is moving away from him, so she's actually not being too re receptive either. Now, this is a little bit strange. When I touch him with the brush, he actually acts almost like he's trying to pair with the brush for a little bit there. And here's a close-up of his emboli. And um, I've never seen this before, but you can actually see as soon as it clears up here. Right there. On the tip of the emboli, you can actually see some of the liquid oozing out so I don't know if that was him trying to pair with the brush but I mean that's a, a I guess a positive thing Now if I can just get him to use that with Natasha here. And again we have contact. And again this is just abnormal. Normally they would immediately start trying to pair up. But again there's just weird stuff going on. He's trying to move away. She's trying to move away. So obviously she's not being receptive but she's not being defensive either she's not trying to attack him or you know anything like that so just kind of strange altogether i think i saw him twitch a little bit there but then he just takes off he gets spooked So at this point I'm just frustrated. I'm trying to keep them both corralled because they're both trying to make an escape and climb up the sides of the enclosure. So um, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure any prospects of breeding are, are not gonna happen. There's just too much poking and prodding going on. 
both parties are not interested and they're both just trying to get away from each other. So this time I think maybe we might make some progress here. He's taking some slow steps toward her. So I'm thinking he's sensed her. He's starting to vibrate a little bit there. There's no drumming going on, but the vibrating is a good sign. And he's kind of easing forward. So she is clearly not interested. Well, if anything, at least it gave me an opportunity to do some pretty cool handling here. Um, after all that, he's still not the least bit defensive and he's just ca casually walking around. So that was kind of fun. And even Natasha decided she wanted to come out for a little stroll and gave me a chance to hold her as well. It's always fun to hold her. She's so gentle and I don't usually get any defensive postures from her. She does flick hairs on occasion, but she's actually pretty good. As she's gotten more mature, she doesn't flick hairs as often as she used to.
so although I got to do some handling, my breeding attempt at the Brachypelma baby has been a complete failure, but that's just the way it goes. Are you kidding me? All this time, <laughs> me anticipating wanting to pair them together and they don't want anything to do with each other. And, and that's a good lesson to be learned. It doesn't always go the way you want it to. Uh, you could want to put them together all you want, but ultimately it's down to whether they want to or not. Now, I don't know what's going on. He, I don't, he acted kind of funny. Um, and, and that's one of the things I noticed from this last molt is that he seems like an old tarantula. Like some, when, sometimes these males at down the line, they don't eat and all they're interested in is trying to breed and they pace and pace and then they just wear themselves out. And he acted like he was a worn out old tarantula. And I don't understand. He just recently molted probably a month ago. It's been in April when he molted. so. Just very peculiar. He he seemed a little off balance. He didn't seem like he was very interested in breeding with her, although I did see some twitching and stuff going on. No drumming, and it just seemed like even though he touched her, a lot of the times as soon as that, that male senses that female, they're all in. You know, they 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 get ready for it and they try to pair as much as possible. But uh, if, if she moved, he freaked out. If he moved, she freaked out, and they spent most of the time trying to climb out of the enclosure. Not a single hair flicking <laughs> the whole time. I actually got to hold both of them, which was a pretty fun thing. But, you know, I, I was just trying to keep her from falling out of the enclosure and, and him too. So um, it's just one of those things where I guess they just weren't ready. Maybe the female's too young. I know that they have to be pretty old before they're ready to, to breed. Um, they get to be about 30 years old, I believe, in captivity. So they live a long time, but it also takes them a very long time to mature. Um, I've heard it said that maybe it takes 10 years before they're fully mature and ready to breed. I don't know. I don't know how old she is because I didn't buy her as a sling. So that may be a factor in this. And of course, he wasn't acting all that enthused about it. But like I said, it doesn't always go as planned. If you watch my last one with the Salmopius Cambridgei, uh, that one went perfect. It, I couldn't have asked for a better pairing. However, this one was a disaster. But like I said, you live and you learn. That's a learning experience. I will try again and see what happens. If I can't get them interested in each other at all, then I'll probably pass along the mail to someone else who can breed them. Maybe do a 50-50 or something and maybe I can get some babies that way and then try to pair her later on down the line, maybe a couple years from now or so. I don't know. But like I said, doesn't always go as planned. So that wraps it up for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. This is the last week of school for me. So after this week, I will be on summer break and that will give me lots of time to work on videos. So hopefully I'll get some more content out. I do have a lot of things that I wanna get out. Um, I've recently had a birthday, so I got a little bit of birthday money and uh, I don't know if I'm gonna make that tarantula money or if I'm gonna buy stuff for my tarantulas or maybe invest in some equipment. I don't know, um, we'll see. But whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be video worthy. I also have a trip to California plan to see my family. Um, I know my brother has seen tarantulas when he goes hiking up there in the mountains. So maybe I can talk him into taking, taking me out there. Maybe I can find something. So I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Redbubble store and I'll put a link down below uh, where you can buy Tarantula Haven merchandise. Any of the proceeds help grow and support this channel. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.